uh, thank you organizer for your invitation to speak at this uh, conference. So today I'm going to uh, speak about uh, good duty modules and the recommends. And this is uh, our uh, recently joined work with uh, Hong Xin uh, Chen. And the main aim of this uh, talk is to understand the derived module category of the endomorphism algebra of arbitrary good duty modules. The notion of good duty modules, I will introduce it uh, in a few minutes. And the main uh, aim is to establish a general form of Harper's result for not necessarily finite degenerate uh, duty uh, modules. As you know, Harper's theorem, which uh, uh, sees the uh, following is if two a finite, uh, if a, a generated, uh, duty, finite generated duty modules given, and you consider the endomorphism algebra, and then the given algebra and the endomorphism algebra are derived equivalent, but for infinite generated duty module, we want to understand what happens in this case, the Harper's result uh, could appear in uh, what kind of form. Uh, this is in some sense is equivalent to describe the kernel of the derived functor. And suppose these uh, duty module, these are good duty modules, and then we want to describe the kernel of this uh, derived tensor uh, functors. As I mentioned, this report, uh, our joint workers uh, with the Hong Xin and uh, Chen. So let's first fix uh, the notations. In general, we denote as A, this is just uh, arbitrary associative rings with uh, identities. And the uh, capital A mod, this means uh, uh, category of all left A modules. And for module M, we take uh, just one module and then we use this little ADDC to denote the summand of find the direct sum of M. So this is a subcategory of A modules and whose objective is just the summons of find the direct sum of uh, M. This is means the, the fixed modules and the, the capital ADDM, this is also the, uh, defined in the similar way but without a finite direct sum, it's arbitrary direct sum of M. And the approach, this is as usual, this is just uh, the category of all left projective A modules. Uh, we use this uh, script DA to denote the derived category of this A modules. Usually, this is unbounded uh, derived category. This means a complex alone to both direction to be infinite in many uh, terms. And we first recall the definition of duty modules. In principle, the notions uh, can be traced back to uh, Bernstein, Garfield, and Polonov's paper, or later by uh, Ausland, uh, Polacek, uh, writing, and uh, finally by a, a paper published in 1979 by Brenner and Butler and later was also simplified as uh, axioms by Harper and Ringer and uh, re uh, very literally as uh, further developed by Mia uh, Shita. So let's recall the definition which is given by Angela Huiger and uh, Covey 2001. Uh, 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 this is the uh, following. You take a just, just a left module called the T. We call this T is n duty modules if the projective dimension is less than equal to n, and we consider the uh, cohomology homology of T and the arbitrary direct sum of T. This means direct sum of T and the index by the subset uh, index by the set I. And we require this is vanish for all i uh, big than zero. And uh, we also require the algebra of the given uh, ring A K 
can be co-resolved by the modules uh, T. That means we have such a uh, exact uh, sequence in a module, but we require each terms T0 to Tn, this should be in a capital EDDT. And we call a uh, intuiting uh, modules good if the, all the terms appeared here. This is just in the little EDDT. And uh, T is called a classic duty module if T is good and finitely generated. Then in this case, we return to the notion uh, of two modules given by Brian Butler in 1979. We, in this talk, always denote B just the endomorphic algebra of uh, two modules. So this is B is fixed in this talk. And classical two module and the directed equivalence, as I mentioned, the first was of, uh, proved by Harper. Now we call this Harper's result, which since if T is a classical duty modules, that means T is good duty module and also finitely generated. And in this case, we get a derived equivalence of two algebra. That means the algebra A is derived equivalent to the endomorphic algebra of B, but we have such a derived equivalence of categories. Um, here, uh, this is the uh, equivalent as triangulated category. And the Hubble can say this is for finitely generated algebra and later Klein part scores extend the half the result uh, to rings and the classical uh, 2D module. This in uh, by this result is just an uh, invariant of derived category. That means given a 2D module, you use 2D procedure. That means you consider endomorphic algebra of the 2D module, then get two algebra which are derived equivalent or has the equivalent of derived category as a triangulated uh, category. And the uh, typical examples maybe is the uh, following. You suppose you have an arbitrary ring, you take an idea. You consider this four by four uh, matrix algebra. I mean, then this is, of course is an algebra then using the tuning theory of the tuning modules, then you will see. And this algebra is direct, derived equivalent to this upper triangular algebra. And here in uh, up uh, down the under the diag uh, main diagram, this means zero. So this is two algebra are derived equivalent. All these two rings are derived equivalent. This was uh, can be given uh, by a two-t module of projected ring less than one. From this example, you will see since derived the equivalence something in some sense can simplify the algebra from this side. You will see the algebra has many elements that are not zero. Yeah. And here you will see this matrix is in here is uh, simple. So uh, why we are interested in the two D modules? Uh, maybe we just simply uh, uh, recall some uh, uh, fact in the history. Uh, Ricard Morita theory of derived category. This in fact is motivated by extend extending Harper's uh, results in general ca uh, case. And 2 module also appear in the representation theory of Lie algebra and algebraic uh, group. And this can be seen by what is called a quasi hereditary algebra defined by klein part scott uh, Also, we uh, have this uh, characteristic 2 module is developed by Ringer and the lab of Ringer. Also in algebraic, Kai algebraic group, the Duncan also introduced as a 2D module. But the 2D module in algebraic, algebraic group is a little bit different as the um, definition introduced here. So representation uh, theory of algebra 
for example, Phoenix to demand conjecture, and this is related to duty mode. Of course, infinite is generally duty mode is involved. Also, in other field like number series, we also you can see the uh, uh, shade of the duty uh, modules. And uh, for uh, generally the uh, duty module, that means duty module may be infinitely generated. And in this case, uh, you, we have this uh, uh, different uh, situation. This was shown by Batsuni and Batsuni, Martin Daisy and uh, Tonolo. And they have proved this in the general case. That means if you have a general uh, duty module, we suppose this is also a good duty a module. And in this case, we can't get, we can't get in general a derived equivalent, but we, in general, we get a reclamant of triangulated category. And here is what we want. Here is original derived uh, category of given algebra E. And here T is just the duty module. And here you see this is a kernel of this one. And of course, by the definition of reclamant, you will see the derived category of E is equivalent to the quotient category of this derived category B modulo these uh, kernels. And uh, we also know that uh, kernels vanish, as I mean here vanish, then you get a uh, equivalence here, and this is if and only if T is duty module, and the classical duty module. And in this case, we get Harper's result. So from this picture, we will see that infinite generated duty procedure, then we will kind of different uh, the triangulated uh, category, or we have a different derived category of A and the derived category of B. These two are different. That means derived equivalence is not invariant under this duty procedure. And here we involved a notion what we call the reclamant. Roughly speaking, uh, reclamant uh, is uh, extension of exact short exact sequence of Abelian categories. So suppose we have three triangulated category and and we call this D is the reclamant of D prime and D double prime if there is uh, mainly two functors from this double prime to D and from D to D prime. And we require the composition of these two functors zero and also this functor has a left of the joint and this functor has a right of the joint. Similarly, we have here have the same uh, requirement. Uh, we also request all functors pointed to the middle term are faithful. That means this is faithful and this is faithful and this is faithful. Also use this uh, of the junction is morphism and you have some nature tri uh, triangles in this uh, triangulated uh, category. And here, this is very nature because here, this this uh, functor has uh, 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 the left of the joint, uh, right of the joint. And then use this here, the morphism, here the morphism, here the morphism. This is just nature units and the core units. And uh, here, this is also the same. So roughly speaking, we can see this. We have three, reclamant is the follow. We have three triangulated category and six functors and uh, requires certain conditions on these uh, functors. So this is the reclamant. And derived reclamant, we always mean the reclamant of derived category of rings or edge bars or even exact categories. This is what uh, uh, called a derived reclamant. So, return back to our uh, concern. So, given our arbitrary good duty modules, uh, we know from Batsuni and the results and Batsuni and his uh, college, uh, uh, colleges, we know we have such a 
Raquel Mang or triangulated category. I mean, this is a derived category of rain. This is a derived category of rain. In some sense, we can assume they are well understood. But the question is here, what is this uh, kernel of this one? And this looks a little bit strange. We don't know anything about this. So, so the question to understand the, the known result, the main problem, in fact, is to understand the kernel of this tensor, a derived tensor function for good duty modules T. So main talk, so our topic mainly concentrated to understand these terms. So for n equal to one, that means the projective dimension of the good duty modules is less than equal to one. So in this case, we have a nice description description of this kernel. That means there's a homological ring epimorphism from the endomorphism algebra of the 2D module to C. C is another algebra and a reclamant. That means here, this is what we uh, already see. And this term, we can realize the kernel of this uh, functors, kernel of this function as a derived category of uh, a ring uh, C. And also this C and this B is used by is, is linked by a homological ring epimorphism. So if T is classical, then C is zero, then we come back to Harper's result. In fact, uh, this C is a universal localization of B. So here we have seen the notion of homological ring epimorphism. So let's recall the definition. The ring epimorphism lambda is called a homological ring epimorphism if there's no tau for any j uh, bigger than zero. This is equivalent to seeing the derived category of S can be considered use this nature embedding uh, functors can be considered as a full uh, subcategory of derived category of R. That means this lambda introduced restriction to a functor or introduce a functor from derived category of S to derived category of R, and this is fully feasible. So this is homological uh, means here. And this notion is uh, appeared in Geiger and Lansing's paper published in 1991. So uh, let's recall what the, uh, the other describes uh, uh, in the literature about the description or kernel of this tensor uh, functor induced by the 2D modules. So in 2012, uh, uh, Dong Yang, they proved the following. So this kernel, that party, can be described by a derived category of a DG algebra. Look, you should notice that this DG algebra is not is different as the Euler algebra. Of course, you can consider the Euler algebra as a DG algebra, but DG algebra, in fact, is not the, the same as, as the Euler algebra. So they use this DG algebra to realize this uh, kernel. And also, Batoni and uh, Pavarin in 2003, they give us another description. This is also interesting. Here, they use the derived category of given algebra, and here, this derived category of the endomorphism algebra, they prove the following. And this kernel, this kernel, still can be realized by a derived category of DG algebra. Anyway, in this both uh, descriptions, this kernel of these functors, uh, these functors can be described by the DG algebra. As I see the side, the DD algebra in some sense is different as uh, the Euler algebra. They live in the different uh, world. So now the question is the general question is can we extend uh, the result for n equal to 1 to the general case? And we still want to describe the kernels. The kernels. Can this result here? I mean, it can be uh, described by homological ring epimorphism. 
and related to the endomorphism algebra of this T. So this is uh, our uh, general uh, uh, questions. So uh, before we uh, give the answer, maybe it's uh, to convenient to introduce the notion. We consider a uh, full triangular set subcategory of this derived uh, category of B is homological if we can find a homological ring epimorphism from B to C such that this subcategory and this derived category of C are equivalent as a triangulated category by this restriction uh, functor is introduced by this lambda. So in this, uh, in this notion, in terms of this notion, our main questions, when is this kernel of this tensor functor homological in this derived category of B? So in this case, uh, we have some uh, characterizations uh, of this uh, property of homological triangulated subcategory. So we suppose T is a good duty modulus and endomorphism just the B, as I said, then we said the following are equivalent, the following are equivalent. So the kernel is homological in derived category of B and the uh, homology of this complex of this complex vanish for all this i big than or equal to two. Here p as in the diff, this is just a projective revolution of this t, just deleted the last term. And this is a uh, complex, a bounded complex with each term the projective uh, e module. And then use this homological functors and you get another functors. And you tensor over this t and you get a complex. In fact, this is a complex a bounded complex, uh, which we requires the homology of the, this complex vanish for i is big than or equal to two. And these conditions uh, we seen, and we have really a reclamant, and the kernel, this functor, kernel of this functor really can be replaced by derived category of a range we call the C. In fact, this C in this C is a generalized localization of B at uh, the uh, two T modules. And so this is, in this case, we have really a description of this kernel of this tensor uh, functors. And here you see, this is the usually ring, and this is usually ring, and this is usually, they are live in the same uh, uh, category or same levels. So what is, uh, here we know this is generally localization. So roughly uh, uh, recall the definition. So let's have a ring R and give a set of complex of R modules. And then we call a ring homomorphism is generalized localization at this set of complex R modules. If this is sigma exact, that means you take the uh, arbitrary uh, exact sequence from this uh, uh, from this uh, uh, set, you tensor over R of this range, then you will get an exact sequence. And also this lambda sigma is universal with the rep respect to the first properties. So the ring, Let's recall our big uh, arm. We, the, well, our big arm is for giving an arbitrary good 2 d model T. And we want to understand or describe the kernel of these tensor uh, functors. And uh, want to have or establish a counterparty of Harper's uh, results. And before I give the answer to this uh, questions, maybe it's better um, to introduce uh, some new definition, which is called an uh, n-symmetric subcategory in an abelian category. So we have a bi-complete abelian category. Bi-complete means this is with uh, co-products and uh, products. And we take a full subcategory called uh, epsilon. And uh, we call this, this epsilon is n-symmetric subcategory of this bi-complete abelian category A 
if this subcategory closed an extension product and a co-product. So there is also a, a by complete uh, a subcategory. And also for any exact sequence and from X in the middle term, there is M plus one terms and there is also Y. And this is exact sequence in this uh, category A, a binary category. If, uh, if we assume the middle term, all this is belong to the epsilon, then we require the first term and the last term must be in this given subcategory. So this is two conditions. And this, if a full subcategory of E satisfies these two conditions, we call this N symmetric category. So symmetric, that means, and it means uh, this, this in some sense kernel and this is co kernel and extension product uh, co product. So this is the notion of n symmetric uh, category. The examples of this n symmetric category is follows. Uh, we take uh, the SP uh, as a module and we take this T just as the tuning module and we consider all modules X with uh, satisfy this condition. And this is n symmetric uh, category. Of course, n is just a projected dimension tutor. In fact, this is always true. If we just require the projective dimension of n is less, is finite. It's just the n, just the n. We don't require other conditions. And this, so this is this means n symmetric subcategory are exact, uh, uh, exact category. They rarely exist. Use these uh, examples. So, in symmet uh, symmetric subcategory has also some uh, properties with related uh, notion. For example, uh, if B is an insymmetric subcategory of A, then it is uh, exact category and seek sub uh, subcategory. And you also M plus one symmetric. So if M I is B I is M I symmetric subcategory, you can consider the intersection, and this is just the maxima M I M one and M two symmetric subcategory. If B is extension closed, to extension closed, then definition two, definition two, the condition is definition two. That means these conditions. Uh, implies P is a N wide subcategory in the sense of this uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, five percent. Uh, this gives definition of a N wide uh, category, of ability category. If B is zero symmetric, then B in fact is zero subcategory, uh, close and product and co product. In fact, the if and only if B is localizing subcategory close and uh, product. And we also have this B is one symmetric. Uh, this is in some sense abelian subcategory close and extension product and the co product. And derived category of exact category, and so we you need this one. So given as exact category, and uh, we can define what is the derived category of exact uh, category. And so this is just the uh, vertier quotient of this uh, homotopy uh, category, model of the homotopy, a uh, model of subcategory of exact uh, complexes. And this is usually uh, in the sense of Neiman or Quillen. So we have the main result uh, of our uh, description of the kernel of, of good tutium uh, modules uh, is uh, uh, following. We suppose T is a good tutium modules over arbitrary ring E, and we let B is endomorphism of this good tutium uh, modules. And the result seems the following. There is a symmetric subcategory of B modules and a regular of this form. And here, 
This is just uh, the morphism of the good uh, 2D modules. This is a given algebra, uh, the rough category of given algebra. And here, this is epsilon. This is just the sub n symmetric subcategory of this Abirni category. So moreover, uh, this reclamant induces. I mean, this is unbounded derived category. Here is always unbounded derived category, and this reclamant reduced to reclamant of upper uh, bounded uh, category. D minus that means upper bounded uh, or bounded or uh, categories. So we have this reclamant of unbounded derived category, and then this can be reduce to uh, the derived category of upbounded complexes. So we get this one. And this uh, result will be appearing in these uh, papers. Uh, what is uh, here, you see, we say this is exists to such a subcategory. And the process can be described in the following way. That means we take all x satisfy these properties. And this is uh, because uh, here n just uh, the projective dimension of this t as a 2D module or as a module over the endomorphism uh, algebra b. So this is n symmetric uh, subcategory. And here, uh, here, this functor, this functor, uh, this is just uh, the tensor derived the tensor functor defined by the 2D module T. Uh, this is, as I said, this is a category of the bounded or bound complexes. And here, let's see a few words about this result. Uh, and these results may be, I mean, these results may be, this result here may be considered as uh, Harper's results for good 2D uh, modules. Because the three category appeared here, three category here and here three category the in some sense has the same type of category namely they are subcategory of modules over rings and this is a module category this is module category and this is a subcategory of module category and they live in the same in some sense same levels and they have the same type of categories and this is why we would would like to see this may be the counterpart of Hubbard's result for infinite generated good uh, uh, modules. And this, from this result, we have also some other uh, corollaries. For example, uh, the following are equivalent for good 2 modules T. And uh, when this is, is a homological uh, subcategory, and we have this defined. We see this, if this is a homological in this derived category B, this is equivalent to seeing the epsilon is a burden category, and also this is vanish. I mean, all these three conditions we are known. And we are known. The new one is just the following. This epsilon, this is red or circular of epsilon, and this will be a derived decomposition of this upper uh, category. And here, this definition of this just, uh, you take a module, you saw, uh, in this B module, then you consider X to N. X to N, that means X from uh, X and Y, we require X in this whole category. And Y just in the left, uh, right uh, hand side of this uh, X to N, this is for n uh, big than or equal to uh, zero. If t is homologic, and t a uh, studio module, and t is called a homologic. If there is a homologic ring epimorphism such that here reward this t, the kernel can be realized uh, as a derived category of a ring. Use this homological ring epimorphism. So this is uh, the new things, new contributors we will see, and this will be a derived 
decomposition of this um, uh, abelian category. So what is derived uh, decomposition? So given the abelian category and the two full subcategory, we call this two full pair is a derived decomposition of this one. If they are self abelian subcategory and then the inclusive functor induces the fully faithful functor at the derived levels. And then we also require from the B to the sh any shift, this is zero, and also for any complex in this derived category of this abelian category, then you will find a, a complex here and a complex here. This is in this B and this is in C, such this building a triangle in this derived category. This is the decomposition, derived the decomposition of E. So this is the definition of a pair is called the derived decomposition of E. This means our case, this is a category, this is a circular category. This pairs is form of the derived decomposition of this category. <coughs> So our next category is seen the following. If we require this ring is left coherent ring, and the T is good to the model. And of course, P is just the endomorphism. And in this case, we get uh, uh, four types of reclamant of derived category. So the reclamant of the derived category is the following. So you take a this bounded derived category, all this uh, like, uh, lower bounded or upper bounded derived category, or unbounded derived category, then you always get a reclamant of this, uh, of the derived category at these levels. So this is endomorphism, and this is a given ring, and this is just uh, an symmetric uh, subcategory of B uh, modules. So this is also, uh, we use this G, means this derived tensor functor introduced by this T, good tutor. The left coherence, this means finite gen generated left ideas are always finitely present, uh, uh, finitely uh, presented. So the proof of this uh, main result is the following. So we have this in function, and this uh, induce a uh, functor, triangle functor, and we want to, we can decompose this functor in the following way, and curl and uh, and this is just kappa. And we, the main uh, uh, contribution is to prove, and this is a uh, triangle equivalence, and use this triangle equivalence, then we get the recommend what we have. I think in the following uh, minutes, I would uh, like to describe some examples. For example, if you take A is two Gorenstein local edge bar, and in this case, the some canonic duty module can be described using this minimal injective uh, resolutions. And in this case, we rarely can describe this uh, case. That means we can de describe uh, this endomorphism um, edge bar of these two D modules by uh, uh, complexes, and then we use these complexes. We can describe uh, the another uh, uh, category, uh, which is just the full subcategory of this complex, but they consider exact uh, complexes. And uh, in this case, then we get a reclamant a two symmetric subcategory and get a 2D model T, and we get a reclama. And in this case, we really can describe the, what is a, a kernel, and this can be described by complexes. And the typical example, maybe you take just the integral Z, you take this case, then you will see, you will get a reclama of these ones. And this, of course, we have also such a reclama. As there's many also questions related to investigate the asymmetric category. For example, how to realize or classify 
and symmetric subcategory of E modules. Then there are also uh, questions given uh, such uh, modules, uh, can you uh, find the conditions such that uh, uh, this subcategory, derived category of this exact category, uh, category just uh, describe a kernel of these uh, functors. I, I think time is just uh, uh, over. I'll just uh, stop here and uh, thank you very much for your attentions.